if you're in search of creativity and inspiration, that and so much more is waiting for you right here. Welcome to McDowell, a peaceful sanctuary for creative artists of all disciplines to have time for themselves, for their art, for the community of fellow artists, and for the good of us all. Composers, filmmakers, writers, visual artists, playwrights, architects, artists. But once a year, for one day only, the McDowell Artist Residency opens its doors, polishes the woodwork, raises its windows, and invites folks to stop by, enjoy the day, and take a look at what artists can do when they've got time and space to create. This year is different because you're invited to join us. Despite the challenge of a global health crisis, the human condition endures. Creation continues, along with hope for a brighter tomorrow. We're celebrating that happy fact today at McDowell, and we're glad you can be here. Today, you'll meet this year's recipient of the prestigious Edward McDowell Medal for her outstanding contribution to American culture and the arts. Singer, songwriter, and author, Roseanne Cash. All because I'm thankful. Tradition has it that notable speakers deliver remarks about the McDowell Award recipient. This year's a little different. In fact, it's quite special. Guests include author, medalist presentation speaker, and host of NPR's acclaimed Studio 360, Kurt Anderson. Author, visual artist, and Madam Chairman of the Board of McDowell, Nell Painter. And Pulitzer Prize-nominated poet and author, Cheryl Savageau. Plus, a performance from Grammy Award winner Emmy Lou Harris. Roseanne will also visit with McDowell Fellows, who will share their latest works, and she'll sit down for an exclusive one on one conversation with renowned New Yorker cartoonist Roz Chast. 125 years ago, American composer Edward McDowell came here to the quiet of the New Hampshire woods to compose his memorable music. And by doing so, he accomplished what every artist did back then, and what they still do now, and what they'll always do in the future, create. I knew I wanted to be a writer, um, but I thought it would be uh, in a little room by myself, you know, where I could keep my anonymity and have quiet and just send it out into the world, you know? I didn't think about being a performer. So when did you sort of realize that you were going to go in that direction? I um, was in Germany. I had been writing songs and made demos of my songs and thought that other people would record them. And then I, I, went, I was at the Lee Strasberg Institute, actually. It was just you know, for three months because I was interested. And I, after three months, I thought, this, I don't want this life at all. I, would, I do not want to be an actor. This is the worst job anybody could have. <laughs> and um, so I went to Germany over Christmas break, and my friend was in the music business. She worked for Areola Records. And I went to a Christmas party with her, and she was introducing me around, and everybody was drunk, and the head of the, she told the head of the label, oh, she writes great songs. And he must have been drunk, because he said, oh, send them to me, we'll make a record. So <laughs> I, um, I sent them to him, and he said, yes, we want to sign you, make a record. And then I went to bed for three days, because I couldn't, I knew what, I knew what would happen. You couldn't just make records and stay in your private room. 
Thanks to Marion and Edward McDowell's commitment to provide that private room with time and space to create, the artists who come here bring their inspiration along with them and the disciplined determination to create. This is the very first one we started when we got here. For some of those artists, perhaps for the very first time, to experience what it's like to have a studio all their own. And there are some that are sort of like more like straight, like that's just Angie doing a portrait of me, that's me doing a portrait of her. Tucked away in 450 acres of New Hampshire woodlands, a creative oasis to do exactly what they're inspired to do, have the time to do it, and share it with their fellow artists and the world. We came here specifically to do collaborative paintings. Oh, so these, I so didn't these realize. Are, these yeah. are all collaborations? Yes. Yeah. We're all made. We each painted. We both painted up every one of them. Almost every one Almost of them. This is like co-writing co for songwriters. That's right. Yep. Well, who's doing yeah. words and who's doing music? That's right. right? The libretto <laughs> and the cantata. <laughs> oh, they, yeah, there's, but they're both very physically active roles. But they, they seem so um, seamless. Roseanne. Oh, when you're really kind of getting and working with the nitty gritty. And that's really what I like about residencies is it's one of the few places where you can talk about process with other yeah. people that, that, you know, it can be different disciplines, but they totally are able to kind of get it. But uh, these are just wonderful. Just, they're very moving to me. Yeah. You've got to explain the process more. I'm yeah. not quite getting it. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, but let's. Is, is there one that you like the more than? Um, <laughs> well, I like the sea. I, this one is nice. <laughs> oh God, I love this too. Oh, yeah, this one's good. So first you cut out the piece, then yeah. you draw into it to give it detail, and then you put the paint on it. Yeah, and before we have to put the matte medium to make. It. Otherwise, it would absor absorb the. Oh, I see. Too. Okay, I see. So this is good. So I just remove the, you know, the excess, the excess, and just lay it right on. Keep going. Yeah, and that's it. Okay. And then, you see, you can almost see. And you want to lift? Yes. It's very sweet to let me do yeah. this. Too. See, maybe I didn't put enough ink, but it's enough, you can see. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Solitude and productivity are just two of the benefits of being a McDowell Fellow. Over the past 100 plus years, nearly 9,000 artists have had the opportunity to retreat from their busy day-to-day, -day, one thing after another lives and experience their very own studio, custom made for inspiration and creation. What are the things you like about touring? What are the things that you don't like? Well, that airport security is not my favorite, but... Uh, uh, God, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about attention. Yeah. <laughs> I just lobbed that one right over the plate yeah. to you, didn't yeah. I? <laughs> um, well, it's changed over four something decades. You know, in the beginning, it was all torture. I thought you went on stage so that people could judge you and that you had to be perfect. And, you know, why are they here? And over time, I realized that it's energy exchange. You know, yeah. you're, you're there to create something together in two hours. And, it's like a sand painting. It's going to disappear in two hours. And it's yeah. so beautiful because of that. And also, I always quote Bob Dylan on this. He says, the audience doesn't come to hear about your feelings. They come to feel their own feelings. So just make the space so they can do that. Someday will come the questions with no answers but we ask. Just the same when we there was a philosopher, Carolyn Heilbrunn, at, at Columbia. She said this thing that I have thought of 
monthly since then, which is that women should live their lives out loud to balance the millennia of male stories. And Joni Mitchell gave me that courage too when I first heard Blue, that she could write such personal, revelatory, poetic songs, put them out in the world as art, and have them be so valuable to generations of people and to the culture as a whole. Roseanne's in good company here at McDowell. For over 60 years, distinguished artists from every discipline have come here not only to accept this honor of high achievement, but also to share what being an artist means to them. The first composer to receive the McDowell Medal in Music was Aaron Copeland in 1961. So 60 years later, it is my special pleasure to honor and celebrate Roseanne Cash, the first woman to be awarded the Edward McDowell Medal in Composition. We are here in a space that has sheltered and nurtured McDowell artists for many decades. And we are here for a warm celebration of inspiration and accomplishment, an acknowledgement of the triumph of art. In recognition of today's honoree, Roseanne Cash, we have made a theater here, sanctified by our collective presence. For what is theater or music but sitting among friends and strangers to witness? to listen and to watch a story unfold. And today we will hear a story. Hello, my name is Cheryl Savageau. My people are Abenaki from Western Maine, the White Mountains, Quebec, and Quinsigamon. I say thank you to the Dawnland. I thank you to the people of the Dawnland, the Abenaki, Kowasek, and Penacook. And welcome, friends. If we're lucky, we grow up with um, the arts, with story, with song, all of those things feeding us. And when we get older, we give back to the pot. We give back the gift we've received. And I feel so much that McDowell is part of that tradition. Now, what kind of artist is Roseanne? My favorite kind, the kind who can't easily be stuck in a pigeonhole. She's a writer and performer of country songs, yes, but also a writer and performer of folk songs and of rock songs and of blues songs and songs that become extremely popular. So a writer, I guess, of pop songs as well. Plus, she has published a book of short stories, very lovely book of short stories indeed, and with her collaborator slash husband, John Leventhal, has a Broadway musical in the works. Each of those genres is a hybrid of previous genres. So her songs, all of her songs, constitute a new hybrid, which is really just another way of saying Roseanne Cash is an American artist who knows the histories of each tributary of that musical river she navigates, from the Delta, from Appalachia, from the Celtic lands. Her songs are full of beauty and dreamy pleasures, but also unflinching pictures of reality and history, and thus of anguish and tragedy. Like all good art, hers is complicated. And let me tell you, she works at it. After her early success, she trained herself to be the artist she felt was worthy of that success. And she knows what every artist knows. I'm quoting her now. I am always a beginner, again and again. I want to end with another great remark by E.B. White. Quote, all that I hope to say in books, all that I ever hope to say, is that I love this world. I am with him, and I have a feeling that Roseanne Cash is as well. Thank you very much. We honor Roseanne Cash, who's the first woman to win the medal in composition. Her honor breaks tradition in honoring a woman composer, composer, though Edward McDowell was a composer, and his widow, Marion, the motivating force beyond the establishment of McDowell, was a woman. 
Roseanne Cash's medal reflects changes occurring right now in US and McDowell history, changes that began before 2020, but the events of 2020 galvanized. I am so pleased and honored to give Roseanne Cash this Edward McDowell medal. So every year when I get a new date book, I write the same quote in the front cover, same quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson, and it says, do not the great always live extempore, mounting to heaven by the stairs of surprise. So I may not be great, but I do find myself on the stairs of surprise quite often, like today. Um, Artists are in a service industry, the premier service industry for the heart and soul. We are bound by an imperative to create, connect, reveal, and to practice artful subversion. And I live by that imperative, but I have never created a single thing in a vacuum or provided any soul service outside of a larger power composed of all the writers, composers, and performers I admire, the traditions I build upon, my own DNA, and this numinous creative force that can't be defined. I stand on shoulders, and I stand shoulder to shoulder with those whose attention span is longer and whose musical ability is more refined, like my husband, John who is also my best reader, my North Star, and who is kind enough to tell me when something I've written or sung is not worthy of my instincts, and he mostly tells me in a nice way. <laughs> <laughs> we should all be so lucky to have that person in our lives, the person we dream of before we meet them. Many of the songs I've written have begun with an image Headlights on a Texas road, a woman who lost an election walking on a beach, Shakespeare and my father arguing in the afterlife, <laughs> little girls like dolls in party dresses who are struck numb with loss, a ship carrying my children sailing over the curvature of the earth into their future and away from mine. Inside these pictures I found are chord changes and keens and backbeats and harmony. And along with dreams of creating, I longed for a community of like-minded souls who spend their lives navigating their own beautiful compulsions in the heart and soul service industry. I just didn't know that McDowell existed back then. <laughs> and here I am, and here you are, so yearning must be alchemy, because we manifested each other. So you honor me as the first woman in composition, but you also honor the particular genres I work in. It's an essentially American songbook, as Kurt mentioned, of folk, blues, Appalachian, country, and all of the feeder streams that go in and out. And that acknowledgement is an added thrill. I see you, and thank you for seeing me. And now, really, I think a first for McDowell, a kind of let the art tell the story. Roseanne's two Dear comrades and artistic collaborators are here to help us fully uh, celebrate what today is all about, the music. First, one of our world's most extraordinary singer-songwriters, admired and beloved, winner of 13 Grammy Awards, composer, lyricist, poet, Emilio Harris, and performing with Ms. Harris, musician, songwriter, and music producer, winner of six Grammys, plus he gets to be the husband of Roseanne, John Leventhal. Please welcome Emmy Lou and John.
so many songs I could have picked of Rose's that, that I love. And this one is probably one of her most deeply, deeply personal, and I shouldn't be singing it because it's so personal about her relationship with her father, um, which I witnessed because I got to know John <coughs> when I got to know Rose. And, um, but I love it so much, and I was so touched by it the first time I heard it. And so with her blessing, I'll do it for you now. All those years to prove how much I care I didn't know it, but you were always there Till that September when you slipped away Middle of my life on the longest day I heard you say I'll be watching After life, there is love. Baby, I'll be watching you from above. Long after life, there is love. And now I believe another first for an historic McDowell Medal ceremony. We are fortunate to hear a performance by the medalist herself. <laughs> uh, music essayist Grill Marcus said this about Roseanne. When you are in the room with that voice, you know something is at stake that something is unsettled. And so it is the tone of voice that leads you to listen for the rest of the story. Please welcome Roseanne Cash and John singing your composition, An Undiscovered Country. All those who come the mothers and the kings, Shakespeare and my father, kick dust up in my dreams. If you took to the voices you can stray far from the track so goodbye my friends it's my turn
Today's celebration's almost over. Come tomorrow morning, hot coffee and breakfast arrives, while the McDowell staff and associates keep doing what they've been doing best for over 100 years, giving talented artists something they need but don't always get, the time and space to create. Thanks to Marion and Edward McDowell and a host of committed corporate and individual supporters of the arts, an abundance of time and space will always be waiting here in the solitude and silence of the New Hampshire woods. No telling what the world will be hearing, seeing, feeling, and, and talking about this time next year. But one thing's for sure, creative arts will be a part of that conversation. So will MacDowell. Young discovered country. Never want.